Okay, under old business, under 7.1, town beach regulations. Uh, we're going to review town beach regulations. We've been working on them for the past couple of weeks, probably the past four weeks. And um, before we have a public hearing, we have to review them and, and recommend uh, wording for a public hearing. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, we have a, an amended draft. Do you have any questions on the draft that we need to talk about before I open this up to any public comment? Uh, Mr. Chair, I would say that um, it's my recommendation that you um, speak on the changes that is, are proposed in this draft. Sure, I'll do that. Um, going down through in the... Item 2. Let's see, let me get it. Um, 3.4 rules a residency item 2 the change is reflected that town decals are available in the town clerk's office on an annual calendar year basis to residents of Guilford to Hampshire residents of the town of Guilford an individual Guilford property is crossed out Individual owners of residential property situated in the town of Guilford is new. Um, in item uh, two under that, there are now two notes. The first was written and the second is, residential property shall not include any parcel of real estate that does not, that are not used primarily for habitation in a dwelling. For example, the following types of real estate do not qualify as residential, boat docks warehouse and storage units, timeshares, businesses, retail stores, professional services, or any other type of commercial operations, nor shall they include properties marketed as short-term rentals unless the dwelling is regularly occupied by the property owner at least 30 days per calendar year. Item number 2B uh, is changed as follows. The original wording is pedestrians, bikeless, bicyclists, or passengers in a motor vehicle without a town decal upon, uh, who show proof of identification in guilt of residency or resident or property ownership. This is changed to pedestrians, bike, bicyclists, and their guests upon proof of identi identification and guilt and guilt of residency or residential property ownership. Uh, item C. Visitors who present the daily guest pass, that whole paragraph has been removed. Item D, that whole paragraph about visitors who present a commercial guest pass has been removed. In parking. Oh, you forgot one. Thing. C has been removed. Uh, e. D, E has been removed. Yeah, you did mention E. Seasonal guest passive. Yeah, I'm not sure, Kevin. You're. I don't. I <coughs> might not have the right. I have a what I call my working copy, yeah, and and um, this is this is your copy. Okay, I didn't realize that you would change them, Scotty. Yeah. So I apologize. In that case, if you don't mind, I'm going to start over. From, uh, well, the only part you missed was that uh, two. No. No, I missed the cover sheet though. Right, that purpose. part uh, 3.2, yes. purpose. That new okay, one. purpose, 3.2. We're adding a paragraph as follows. In addition, these regulations are intended to implement the terms of the deed to the property dated June 30th, 1947, as recorded in the Belknap County Registry of Deeds at Book 295, page 7. Especially the covenant provided therein that states as follows. It is part of the consideration of this deed that said town, its successors and assigns, will maintain said property for at least 60 days during the summer season as a bathing beach and playground for use for the use of residents and taxpayers of the town and members of their households, and exclude all other persons therefrom, except their guests, 
who may be admitted under such restrictions and regulations as the town or its selectmen may from time to time prescribe. There's a note in parentheses. Note, the term guests as used in these regulations shall mean family and friends accompanied by a resident slash taxpayer to the town beach and shall not include guests or paying customers of lodging establishments and or short-term rentals. That's an added paragraph. Uh, parking. Again, you skipped section E on the... That's been removed. That's been, oh, I'm sorry. Removed, yeah. Section E, which talked about seasonal guest passes, that's been removed. I thought I had done that already. Mm -hmm. Daily guest passes has been removed. And commercial. Commercial passes has been removed. Seasonal guest passes has been removed. Then parking. <clears throat> in item C, parking. Uh, section 2. Limited parking, limited daily parking at the overflow parking lot, the ice rink, is available for passenger cars and trucks and two-wheeled motor vehicles with a town decal or a added temporary pass. Parking for RVs, buses, or trailers may be allowed in this overflow lot under special circumstances upon prior approval from the Parks and Rec Department. And again at line 6, section 6, Vehicles parked at the town beach or in the overflow parking lot without a visible town decal or, or added temporary pass, removed guest pass, added temporary pass, and subject to being towed at the owner's expense. Um, item 3.4G, prohibitions. Note 11, there is no parking anywhere along Varney. We added Point Road because that's the right name of that road. And in enforcement, uh, we, we um, deleted the phrase program director and changed it to recreational, recreation specialist. And finally, the effective date. Um, at this point, as amended, as amended would be February 28th, February 8th, 2023, to be effective immediately thereafter. That's assuming that whatever language we find they agreed to um, is appropriate public hearing. And then we'll go by the board. Questions of the Board of Selectmen? Mr. Chair, would you just mind um, just reiterating basically what the major changes have been? Sure. The major change. I'd be glad to. The major changes are we are removing um, Daily guest passes for purchase by residents or property owners from the town beach attendant. We're removing um, all guests must be accompanied by a resident or property owner. We're removing commercial guest pass um, purchase. And we're removing seasonal guest pass purchases, purchase. Um, there's some discussion here in parking. And again, what we've done is a had to tighten up the regulations and reflect the covenants and the deed of transfer to the town of Guilford from the original property owner. Sure. Anything else? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Thank you. Okay. This is a bit unusual by uh, select residents, but I'm going to open up the meeting just for public comment. Please be brief if you have any public comment, uh, and then we're going to discuss these uh, further and we will vote on what we call a final language that will be heard at the public hearing in two weeks. So is there any public comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Dorothy. You folks listened to the last meeting, and I want to say thank you. People wanted the passes put back to the way that they used to be, and now it looks like the residents will be able to reclaim their town beach. And for that, again, thank you. Um, it's nice to hear. The other question I have, however, is from what you just read, is it, do you have any copies available by any chance? So once the board settles on the version, we'll have a complete uh, copy of everything on the website? Okay. 
How about the temporary copies that you folks are using tonight, <coughs> just to be able to read through? It should be on the website tomorrow, but... Uh, oh, okay. All yeah, right, then. Yeah, because we, we'll approve language tonight. Scott will get it posted tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Scott and Chrissy will get it posted tomorrow. Okay, very good. That's basically it. How do you like that? Short and thankful from me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other public comment this evening? Danielle? Can we just go over the, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> foot, um, the description of what, this, who can get the town sticker, um, that language was added. Um, yep. Read it the way it stands right mm -hmm. now in the la new language. Town decals are available in the town clerk's office on an annual calendar year basis to residents of the town of Guilford and individual owners of residential property situated in the town of Guilford, persons whose names are on a deed. Upon proof of identica identification, residency, and vehicle registration, decals must be affixed to the driver's side of the motor vehicle and correspond to that vehicle's registration number. Okay. Um, furthermore, residential property mm -hmm. shall not include any parcels of real estate that are not primarily used primarily for habitation in a dwelling. For example, the following types of real estate do not qualify as residential. Boat docks, warehouse and storage units, timeshares, campgrounds, recreational vehicle parks, businesses, retail stores, professional services, or any other type of commercial operations, nor shall they include properties marketed as short-term rentals unless the dwelling is occupied by the property owner at least 30 days per calendar year. Okay. Um, I just have one concern. Um, landowners, they're obviously taxpayers, and the deed from the beach said taxpayers, residents. Um, there's people that may have bought Mineral Springs cottage, um, condos years ago, and that comes with a, a piece of land they share with somebody so they can have access to the Gunstock Acres in um, there. But they, when they sell their condo at Mineral Springs, they hang on to the land so they can still get the Guilford taxpayer decal. So it's just a piece of land. It doesn't have a structure on it. So we're excluding land as well. They would not qualify Correct. under this definition. Okay. All right. I just want to be clear so when people come in, we know what we're right. in your scenario you're absolutely right they still would get a, a decal because they own property meaning at mineral springs but right. if they only owned vacant that piece land of the parcel right they mm -hmm. wouldn't get that okay all right i just wanted to talk but about you bring that. up a good point i don't know if we should, we should have that vacant land to uh, the that paragraph you read right. okay <clears throat> does anyone want to change or uh, any concerns with what the TCTC just said or well I think in that paragraph two under notes we should add in let's see where the place to put it after camp campgrounds recreational vehicle parks vacant land sure vacant land vacant lots whatever yeah okay all right that's all thank you Okay. Um, anything else? I don't know if there's anybody else. Okay. Anybody else want to speak to this article? Okay. Uh, Scott, I had a couple of questions for you. In paragraph 3.4A to parentheses A, vehicles displaying a town, a valid town detail. Um, if I am a seasonal property owner, my residence is Massachusetts, I have, I, I own a parcel, of, I own a house up here that I come to every weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm entitled to a beach pass, okay. So, I prefer the word eligible as entitled. Okay, That's well. <laughs> semantics. <laughs> well, my concern was, because we add upon, we add that, persons whose names are on a deed, parentheses, yep upon proof of identification, residency, and VIC registration. That's just a form of proof. What are you saying, to change it to or? And or? 
I think it should be, yeah, I, I don't think it, the way that reads to me, you have to have all three. Okay. I assume Andor would solve that problem. Okay. The town clerk's office has been doing it for a number of years. They have a pretty good system. <laughs> No, but that it's, language isn't proposed to change, right. but yeah. But I want to give her, I want to give her the backup right. she needs. Okay. Um, Valid. Okay, can we look at... And we have no trouble in here with the definition of guests that come through the gate at this point, correct? Because we removed it at one point. Right, so now to get in there, you're, you're either in a car with a town decal, or you're coming in with town resident walking in or on a bicycle. Those are the only ways of getting in. Okay, and what happens to the, to the kid who bikes down from Sprucewood Drive mm -hmm. with his backpack? He doesn't have a property deed. Right, but he's a family, he's probably a resident. He probably, he probably he's certainly a resident. Right, so if you're a resident, you can get in. But how, how does, how does... Well, when it comes to a kid in that situation, you know, chances are the attendant will give him the benefit of the doubt the first time and want to know more the second time. Okay, what's the more? What's the no Just, more? It, no, in fact, where the kid lives. Okay, okay. Young person. Child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I thought the chairman used the word kid, so <laughs> young okay. such a being. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, that's I believe that's all my notes from my previous language. Let's see. So the language has, has changed this evening. I have 3.4 rules, A, residency and entry, 2A, valid vehicles displaying a valid town decal. The new language is as follows. Town decals are available at the town clerk's office on an annual calendar year basis to residents of the town of Guilford and individual owners of residential property situated in the town of Guilford. Persons whose names are on a deed upon proof of identification, residency, and or vehicle registration. Decals must be fi affixed to the driver's side of the motor vehicle and correspond to that vehicle's registration number. There shall be no charge for the initial town decal, but replacement decals shall cost $25. And then we've added, to define that further, uh, note two, Residential properties shall not include any parcels of real estate that are not used primarily for habitation in a dwelling. For example, the following types of real estate do not qualify as residential. Boat docks, warehouses and storage units, timeshares, campgrounds, recreational vehicle parks, vacant land or lots, businesses, retail stores, professional services, or any other type of commercial operations nor shall they include properties marketed as short-term rentals unless the dwelling is occupied by the property owner at least 30 days per calendar year. I don't believe there are any other changes to our language. Gentlemen, a motion please. I think you just need a consensus, Mr. Uh, Chair, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. To schedule a public hearing. Okay. Yep. Public hearing will be February 8th, 2023, at, in the 7 o'clock meeting. Scott, you'll get that tomorrow? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. And I, I will comment, um, at least from my perspective, I do appreciate the amount of feedback we had come in uh, by email and telephone, uh, and obviously uh, at public meetings on um, on this issue. Crop TV.